My friend Ann Coulter joins us now, the syndicated columnist and the best-selling author of In Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome, and Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. Ann, were you losing your mind watching last night's uh, Democrat clown show? Well, I liked it better than the Yankees-Astros game, so I was quite <laughs> enjoying it myself. <laughs> now, do, do you think they're going to get anywhere? I just, I sit back at a distance and think, I want Donald Trump to get another term. I want us to get another conservative on the Supreme Court. I want to see what we can get if the Republicans can manage to recapture the House and actually move some legislation now that Paul Ryan has gone off to his uh, well-paid job on the board of directors of Fox News and, right. you know, and all the other bad things that are happening in the world. I just don't understand how the Democrats say, we're going to appeal to the American uh, people by raising their taxes, taking over their health care, opening up the border, and, 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 oh, and by the way, Beto is going to be coming door to door wearing jackboots <laughs> yeah. to take your guns. That'll sell. That'll work, right? Well, luckily for the Democrats, I don't think anybody was watching last night. I mean, it's on <laughs> CNN. Um, it was really, really boring. I think that is not an, an accident. I think they're doing it intentionally so they can gin up the wokeocracy without, without scaring normal Americans. But, yeah, I mean, the gun debate, for example, the only debate was do we, do we ask people to give up their guns voluntarily or does the government come and confiscate them? That's, that's, <laughs> that's ideological diversity in the Democratic Party. <laughs> well, and you know what they're going to do, Ann. They're going to say, oh, of course it's voluntary, but Beto already hinted. And if you don't voluntarily show up and give up your Second Amendment rights, we'll come and take them uh, door to door. So they'll get the easy, low-hanging fruit with all the people who say, well, if it's illegal, I'll go down and you know, surrender my firearms to my government masters. And then the, uh, the hardcores will come after them with hammer and tong. I also liked, as I, as I mentioned in my column this week, um, even when they're asked, asked directly about the drug epidemic in the country, um, mm -hmm. opioids, heroin being mentioned specifically, even then, the Democrats apparently have a policy now, do not mention illegal immigration, don't mention it, don't ask about it, pretend it doesn't exist, this is very bad for us. Um, so when it comes to illegal drugs, and as um, my regular readers know, um, from I'm constantly recommending this book, Dreamland, about the opioid and heroin crisis in America by a fantastic L.A. Times reporter. Rarely do I promote someone else's book as enthusiastically as this. It's Sam Quinones' book, Dreamland. And, you know, he's a liberal, but he's a great reporter, a uh, really great reporter. Um, and even he says nine, more than 90% of the heroin in this country is brought in by, by Mexicans, either legal immigrants or illegal immigrants. Now with all the anchor babies, they can have people on both sides of the border moving the heroin, um, introducing Americans to black tar heroin. But not one Democrat would mention that. No, they want to go on and on about how, oh, I'm going to go after the pharmaceutical companies. But I kept noticing on the pharmaceutical company point, um, there's kind of one pharmaceutical company in particular, um, um, the only one that manufactures OxyContin, Purdue Pharma. So, uh, you know, I looked it up. Check out the political donations. The matriarch of the S Sackler family, and it is Purdue Pharma that's being sued by, right. um, I think it's 27 state attorneys general, um, in, I believe, thousands of private lawsuits for for. Um, at least it is alleged that they um, pushed this addictive drug, denied its addictive properties, had ideas for, you know, get more people on it, get more people on it. This is what's being alleged and, and is in the book Dreamland. Um, in any event, they, the Democrats never mention pharma. Turns out the matriarch of, of pharma, it's owned by the Sackler family, gave donations to both Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker <laughs> last year. So, oh, and, and between saying, in addition to going after the pharmaceutical companies, which shall go unnamed at a Democratic debate, that the other half of the Democrats were demanding that we legalize drugs. <laughs> yeah. Well, in fact, in fact, Dan, out in my neck of the woods, they're literally, they're, they've both decriminalized heroin, meth, and cocaine, and now they're talking about saying, well, why don't we just take it? It's not, it shouldn't be illegal at all. But I'm glad that you mentioned heroin instead of pharmaceuticals, because, you know, if you read the JAMA studies and these other studies that are out there, they say the problem that's killing 72,000 people a year is not pharmaceutical drugs. No, it is no. street drugs. And, and you say, well, but they started with pharmaceuticals. A tiny, tiny fraction 
are the you know the standard story yeah. that TV news tells. I broke my wrist. The doctor gave me twelve uh, opioid you know oxy pills and told me you got to cut it off after that. And then I magically became addicted and immediately went to street heroin. That is the the <laughs> sympathetic story. It is not what the medical evidence shows. This is recreational stuff where people yeah. recreated with heroin and then they got hooked and then they got dead and they want to blame the Sackler family. And I got no ties to them. I just think we should put the blame where it belongs. But they, they want to blame Purdue because Purdue has a big bank account and you can't go after the bank, well, other than Shorty Guzman, you can't go after the bank accounts of the drug dealers. But you're right. Put up a wall and a lot of that drug trafficking is going to be at least slowed down if not stopped. 90% and, but they don't want to talk the problem about is solved with a wall. Yeah, I think it is largely, so. at least it becomes a lot t easier to enforce it. But like you said, the Democrats have laid down the law. Don't mention the wall, but we're going to pretend that, night, and even the DEA agrees with your friend, uh, and I will check out Dreamland. Uh, maybe I'll even oh, get Oh, you won't be able to put it down. It's fantastic. But but that that this is where it's frustrating because it's it's almost as tough an intellectual exercise as saying saying let's talk about the Ukraine controversy but forget about that stuff in fun involving Hunter and Joe just pretend it doesn't yeah. exist and well they're they're inextricably linked aren't they No it's uh, as I say in the column it's like saying we're going to go after middle aged men to crack down on on child sex trafficking on Orgy Island and nobody ever mentioning Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Middle-aged men. That's I, the problem here. Yeah, that's Anne, the Democrats. T Tina Larson w asked me, my wife, two nights ago, what is happening with any kind of prosecution of the rest of the enablers around Jeffrey Epstein? Sure, he's dead, but is there still any effort to go after all these people that help make it possible? Oh, yes, there is, and there was a little update today. Um, before my time is up, I, I tweeted it. Um, Judge, uh, I forget her name, Loretta Preska in New York, not only um, said that Virginia Jifra, I think that's how you pronounce it, the Australian gal, um, yeah. she may proceed with her defamation suit against Alan Dershowitz, and, which I think is the best news for all of the Epstein victims, she threw the David Boyes firm off off representing them. I don't know why. I do know that David Boyes um, um, represented the crooked company Theranos, um, totally went to bat for, for Weinstein. Read the details about that, Harvey Weinstein. And he has absolutely nothing to do with this case. I mean, these poor Epstein victims, they don't know who a good attorney is and who a, who a magnificent attorney is. And the attorney that started this whole case, Pat, um, sorry, Paul Cassell, is probably the greatest attorney in the country. <laughs> he was already rep representing them, sick with him, victims. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to be interesting to see how the eventual choice of the DNC is going to handle some of these issues because you, I hope that Donald Trump is going to throw these issues right down their throats, uh, the, the eventual winner's throat. And, and I'm guessing, if you had to guess at this point, is it, is it Senator Warren is going to end up? Because I'd love to see him mop the floor with her. She's run around telling lies about, well, she stopped telling lies about being a Native American, but she's on to new lies about being fired for being pregnant. I think she would be a great candidate. <laughs> To, to, to beat, and we will, we will use every advantage we can to remind Americans of that. Ann Coulter's book is Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. Ann, thank you very much.